Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bird's Eye View. I'm your host, Erica Bird McCall, because my last name is McCall. And the person I have here today also calls me Bird. He does not call me Erica, although I am his daughter. That's right, everyone. Today's guest is no other than my father, my dad, my pops, my guy, a.k.a. Gregory Juan McCall. Yes, pulling out the full government name for everyone to hear. I'm super excited for this pod because, of course, it's super special. It's my dad, y'all. I mean, he's been knowing me for 26 years. Hence, it is me and my sister's birthday on Sunday. Fun fact for those who do not know. Well, we talked about my sister on the pod, so that's why I'm also bringing it up. Me and my sister have the same birthday. We're exactly eight years apart, so I'll be 26, and I will not say her birthday. You guys can figure that out with the math. (laughs) I'm sure she'll be mad if I mention that. But it's our birthday on Sunday, August 21st, exactly eight years apart. We're doing a big, um, it's, I think that's a really special thing. You know, my dad has two daughters playing in the league and they also have the same birthday. How wild is that, y'all? How wild is that? Fun facts all across the board. I will not tell you the, the answer that he gives everyone because it embarrasses me. Would you like to say? It's all about laughing. timing. <laughs> <laughs> good timing that's what i say for my block shots yes timing it's gonna okay. be that time <laughs> have the right time okay we'll leave it at that but for those who do not know who i am if you are a new listener thank you for listening in thank you guys for all my my uh my loyal fans out there my bird's eye view fans my birdies that's what i'm gonna call y'all y'all my birdies shout out to all my birdies um but you don't know who I am. I am Eric McCall again, about to enter into my sixth year playing professional basketball. I've played five years in the WNBA all across the board in Indiana, Washington, Atlanta, uh, Minnesota. The list goes on. Shout out to Sylvia Faust for retiring. Super dope. Kia Vian for retiring. Sue Bird, all the good stuff. Um, about to enter into playing into Spain very soon. I leave in less than a month to play in Salamanca, Spain. Super hyped for that. And this is my second season doing this podcast, man. And I decided to do this podcast to, to hear, to, to edutain, to educate you guys on women's basketball and also just entertain y'all. I think I'm a funny person. I hope you guys feel this way uh, after listening to this podcast. But anyways, I'm talking too much as usual. Let's get into the guest. The guest is no other than my father, Greg McCall. During this podcast, it's going to be a little bit different, y'all. Since my dad is a coach um, and my father, we're going to be kind of breaking down his coaching journey. Also, um, just getting some tidbits of wisdom as to how he got not one, not two, but three kids into professional basketball. My brother has just entered. He just he's like three days fresh into playing in Poland right now. And so we're super excited for him. So. We're going to be getting some wisdom from him as to how he has accomplished this. But first, Pops, let's, let's read your bio because I read everyone's bio. Just because you're my dad on me, I'm going to say you my dad, and that's going to be it. This, this guy has done big things in it life, is. and, of course, I got to hype is. him up. That would have been enough right there. <laughs> no, nah, man, I hype up all my guests, even if you're my dad. All right. My dad. Is also he also played ball of course he's a coach so he also played ball he was a team captain of the csub csub is cal state university bakersfield where i am from where we live my family lives in bakersfield he's 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 repping his shirt right now for csub in 1991 uh for the division two final four team so you were a captain for that team super dope i did not know that when i'm doing my research i love it learning more about my pops day by day super dope He began his coaching career in 1994 at East Bakersfield High School. He also coached on the men's side of CSUB, Cal State University, Baker in 1997, where they won the NCAA Division II National Championship. So we got we got a champ on our hands. You know, I like to have the the heavy hitters and you are heavy hitter, Pops. Appreciate it. Always. (laughs) Uh, He began his 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 coaching of the women's side at half college for 10 seasons from 1997 to 2007. So literally since I've been born, my dad's been a coach, pretty darn amazing. And he's entering in in his 12th season. Is that correct? 12th season? Yes. 12th season. Entering in in his 12th season as head 
women's basketball coach at CSUB Bakersfield. So yes, he's played there. Yes, he's coached there on the men's side. And yes, he coaches on the women's side. He's CSUB Bakersfield to the heart. Absolutely love it. And fun fact, he's had at least one athlete earn all conference honors since 2014. That means he's coaching them up to perfection, to honors. Big time, big time, big time. Okay, and usually we do an overseas segment about my you know my guest overseas experience my dad did not play overseas nor did he coach overseas but y'all he has some pretty darn cool kids and so we're gonna read these kids bio <laughs> yes. yes to show how amazing of a parent he's been um on and off the court so of course we have my sister Dewana Bonner she's a two-time WNBA champion a EuroLeague champion a Euro Cup champion she's just a champion all across the board She's a highly decorated person and my sister. So I love her. <laughs> Next yeah. up, you got me. I am the one and only Erica Bird. McCall! McCall, I'm a McCall! Stanford great. A Stanford great where I got my nickname at Stanford. A Stanford great. Played in the WMA for five years. Looking to extend that. And I'm about to go play for one of the top teams in Spain. or Top teams in Europe. That's big time, y'all. Big time for me. Big time for him. Next on the list, we got Justin Ryan McCall. He is my baby brother. We are four years apart, and he is about to enter into his first professional career playing basketball at Poland. He is also known as one of the most athletic players to ever come out of Cal State University Bakersfield. So, yes, my brother is a part of that uh, bloodline when it comes to CSUB. Three kids three professional athletes. And of course, guys, I don't know if you guys know, I also have other siblings. They do not play. Um, I have one sibling that plays basketball. His name is Sean. State champ. He is a state champ. That's right. That's big time. He is a state champ. And I remember watching that. He's a state champ for, for, for Bakersfield. And they went on and, and did great things. And Bakersfield basketball was like booming at that time. And there hadn't been a state champ in a long time for basketball. And his team was the first in a very long time to win a basketball state championship. So shout out to Bubba. Then we got Cheyenne, my sister Cheyenne. She uh she played basketball for a little bit. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, she she finished in high school. I think like her sophomore junior year, she stopped playing. Um, but she is a mother now um to my beautiful nephew. Um, so yeah, we have that. So now my, my father has three grandchildren. Uh, well, my sister Dewana has the twins, and then we have the twins, Callie and Demi. And then we have little Mr. Amari with my sister Cheyenne. And then, yes, we have one more. We have a baby of the family. We have Miss Chloe McCall, y'all. And Chloe is eight. Yes, Chloe is eight. <laughs> Everyone is always surprised when they hear that Chloe is eight. Yes, we have a little sister. Shout out to him for doing that. Um, but she is the light and the joy of the family. She is the comedian I think she's hilarious um and very independent because we are all old she has old siblings um that range from old <laughs> to young and so Chloe is the last of them and I think Chloe is going to personally be taller than me um she's really lanky y'all she's built like Dewana um I'll be posting pictures all on the podcast y'all can see what my family looks like uh, my dad is six seven if you guys do not know so that's where we get our height from um and I think Chloe's going to be at least six three yeah, so maybe talk. Yes. 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 Uh, so yeah, and 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 those are the kids. <laughs> kids. Those are the kids. Yes, the kids with a Z. Uh, so that's the bio for my father and that and all his all his dope children and all the things that they've done in life, on and off the court. You've probably been the longest bio that I read, but you're my dad, so I don't care. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the end of the bio portion of the show. Um, now we're going to roll into the game where I like to have some fun with my guests. And of course, this game is called No Other Than. It's in the blood. Oh, yeah. If hey, those hey, do not know, hey. that is our family motto. It's in the blood. That's what we say. My dad's got a tatted on him on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> that's our family motto man it's just just anything like anytime we accomplish something like man it's just in the blood that's what we do that's what that's what calls do and um you know we represent the name well so this this game is no other title than in the it's in the blood all right ready first question 
this one's just for me because it's my podcast and I get to ask this. <laughs> Are you? All right. Favorite coaching memory when I was a kid. So when you were coaching me growing up, what was your favorite memory for me? Oh, wow. There's so many. So, so many. The biggest one was the day I, I was so, I mean, I was shocked, but happy at the same time. Um, you were running track and this is your last track meet. And right before I think you're about to get ready to go to the high school, I believe. No, it had to be before that. It was before that. And you broke out and you were doing well in track. And you stopped, you like, I don't want to do any more track. I just want to play basketball. I was shocked. I was ex of course extremely happy because one of the things I did not do as a parent, I did not force basketball on my kids. You did not. I am a pure D junkie. And it's just really naturally, it's in my blood. I mean, I can't, don't know what I would do without it. I've been playing it for so long. I still do try to play. Um, man, and so it's, it's just in my blood. So I, that's one of the things I did not do. But when she came to me and told me she wanted to play basketball, I was excited because I don't know what inside, but I tried to stay calm. And when she didn't look, I was jumping up and down for joy, um, knowing that, you know, she wanted to play. And I told her, like, you know, this is some of the things that she had to do. So I kind of gave her the recipe. Maybe we'll talk about that later. We will. We'll get to that for sure. Okay. When I decided I'd do quick track, because I freaking hated it, y'all. Oh, I hated track so much. I ran the 400 and it was just the, the nerves that I had with running track. I was a pretty, and I was, I ran, you know, pretty well for, I, I would say, you know, for what my age was, but I hated it with the passion. My mom ran track. Um, so I wanted to give it a try, but ugh, just not for me. Obviously basketball worked out well. <laughs> so... <laughs> I guess I made the right decision. I guess I did. All right. Next question. Who was most likely to beat you in one-on-one -on -one out of all the kids in the family? Who was most likely to beat you one-on-one? -on -one? And yes, somebody will beat you, but but who would it be? In the family? In the family, yes. Right now, nobody can beat me. That's a lie. We've all beat you at least one time. Now, who? <laughs> I don't remember. A couple of times. A couple of times, y'all. In the quarantine, we with me, my brother, and my dad, and my brother's best friend were battling out every single day. Every single day. And so, uh, which one is going to be? Is it me, Justin, or Dewana? Because I won bragging rights so if you're going to say me. Wow. That's a tough one because you put me on the spot. I am. Who's likely to beat me? It's, it's hard because it's, it's tough for you guys to beat. It's, I, I'll give each one of you guys a game of peace. Okay. I'll, I'll give each one of you a game of peace. That's a good father. Good, good father answer. <laughs> uh, it might be Chloe. By that time when she, it might be Chloe. <laughs> Not That's the baby. Be Chloe. Not the baby. All right. Next question. That this. Ugh, okay. Chloe, eight. She's eight years old. Yes. Not gonna Chloe, beat you. Chloe will be the one to beat me by that time. Okay. We've all beat him. So I, 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 I'm gonna say me, of course. But then we'll, you will, you know, with this next question, we'll get into why. Okay. Which child resembles your game the most? Oh. The one. Why? Because of our height and we, I didn't start playing post until I got started doing pros. Mm -hmm. I did the CBA, semi. Mm -hmm. yep. That's when I started getting into the post. So all my career I played for women. I think all her career she played for women. I mean, Justin had did too, but He's way more athletic than we've ever have been on yep. his jumping ability. Yep. How he jumps. 
as far as the, the shooting the deep shots, that's where we resemble the most at because we shoot long threes. For those who want to thank the person who, when you see those deep threes shot by Dewana Bonner, you can thank our father, Greg Bacall. Um, it's always interesting to, to, to see like our different playing styles because one, me and D just, our, our body types are completely different. Um, so, you know, I couldn't imagine her being opposed with her body type. It just makes more sense for her to be a guard. You were a guard. Justin is considered a guard. I'm the only post in the family and I'm the shortest one. Um, Dewana is six, five. I think she's six, six personally. Um, the way that she looks, I, she probably wants to say that she's smaller, but I think she's six, six and Justin is about six, six as well. He's six, seven. I'm six, two. Some people, they just measured him. They said that he was six, three overseas. Six, three. <laughs> That's what they said. That man, that man is at least six, six, five, at least. Yes. Um, but anyways, I'm the shortest one in the family and I'm the post player. So it, it's kind of weird um, to see like everyone else in my family uh, is a guard and I'm a post player. And that's why I think I have that advantage as to beating my dad, because he's not used to banging like that. This, this man, he used to just shoot shots when he go play. When he goes play pickup, all you do is shoot shots. You just want to shoot threes. And he's not used to that back down. And that's why I think I have the upper advantage as opposed to my siblings. You know, he's used to guarding guards. He ain't used to guarding the post. And so that's why, you know, I, I, I come to bang and I come to win. And, and, and I think that's why. <laughs> that part is true. She is a banger. Uh, she's a true banger. The more you bang, <laughs> the more she loves it. So the less you bang, the more she, you can probably take her out of her game. by Exactly. Not exactly. You bang her, that's right up her alley. So that's the advantage she has. Oh, I'm probably giving away a secret. So I'm not going to get that away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Since I am, you know, the post player in the family, who, who has the best shot? Who had the best shot in the family? I know it ain't me. <laughs> well, I will be honest. I know it is not me. That one I will not take. It's, it's between y'all three. I don't want to take credit for everything, but mm -hmm. I, I am like the best shooter too. Mm -hmm. But out of the siblings, Deep ball, Dewana, mid range, Justin, yes. post game, Erica. And it's really, truly in that order. Is that's what it is. Yeah, um, Justin has a good mid range. Yeah. yeah, his mid range is deadly. So, yeah. but the deep threes, stuff is Dewana, Justin, mid range, Erica's definitely around the rim, block 15, and then she's consistent. She can shoot the three, can shoot the deep three. We're working but, on that. <laughs> yeah, even Dewana can shoot the mid range, but it's not like Justin. Justin can shoot post up but it's not like either one of the sisters there you have it that's and that's the McCall fam that's and that's our uh scouting report right there <laughs> so as you can tell, I could teach all levels that's oh just, absolutely that's for the recruits out there <laughs> this also this is also a recruiting podcast you know they gonna listen in and just just know what we can do and what he can do on and off the course so we absolutely love it all right next question Best advice you've given us as kids? Wow. Um, I've given you guys, I guess you could say, well, it'll be three now, but it was four at the time. Yep. Uh, and I'll say this. It was number one, to keep God first. Two, family. As you can tell, we are very, very close to family. Three uh, was academics at the time. And now they're all with, out of school. So we can take academics off the table. Well, Dewana, she's still in school. She's a nerd. So she loves school. Out of all my kids, she's the one. Now, if you ask who loves school the most, Dewana, hands down. She absolutely loves going to school. So, But that was number three in school. So I'll go back over those three again. Yep. So I first, it was family second. Academics third, and then basketball, of course, was the last one. And then it was a 4A underneath that. And that 4A was, if you listen to me, I will help you get to where you need to get to. And that was to the pros. And each one I had something different to probably tell them along the way, because of course they were all play different positions and they all did have their own personality, but 
the one thing I did tell them, I told well, the one that started its journey first, then, which was of course the toughest one because of course she was in Alabama, different than I was out here in California. And I would bring her out in the summer and I'll go out and watch her in the summertime. And I'll coach her out here in the summertime out here in California. So teaching her different things and telling her different things and she picked up on it really, really quick. It was really amazing how fast she picked up on it. So then with Erica, what that 4A was, follow in your sister's footsteps. When she picks her foot up, you put your foot in there. When she picks her other foot up, you put it in there. You just follow the pattern. And it ended up, they, she followed the pattern, but again, of course she went in her own direction of playing in the post. So I had to learn how to teach her how to play post. No matter how much I tried to put her on the perimeter, mm -hmm. she would go back to the post. No matter how much I tried to put the one in the post, she would gravitate back to the perimeter. So I was able to teach that part. Then with Justin, same thing. Follow in your sister's footsteps. Of course, him being a boy, I'm not a girl. I don't want to be a girl. I want my own thing. No, son, that's not what I'm saying. This is what you're doing. But as he got older, he understood what I was talking about. And now he's was able to head down that right direction as well too, down that same path. So it's been one of those four, those four areas right there. There you have it. Oh no, that's that's been the the foundation oh. really of we got a guess. Oh come on in, guess. Come on in, we have a guess. It's our <laughs> baby sister, Chloe McCall. Chloe, say hi. Say hi to the folks all across the world. You say hi to a lot of people across the world. Say Hello. hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. And the world Chloe. wants to know, are you going to play basketball? Mm -hmm. She said yes with a serious face. That's her favorite sport, y'all. Again, She's smiling. I am very, very happy. <laughs> happy pops. <laughs> Thanks, Chloe. Uh, all right. Well, that 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 segment finishes up the the game portion. But just going off of that, like those those four keys that you mentioned have been the foundation, really, of of my childhood, of my life. Um, and so, yeah, shout out to you, man. Cause that's really kept me grounded, kept all of us grounded into, you know, the goals that we want to achieve. Um, and yeah, and, and especially with school, you know, that allowed me to go to the, one of the best schools in the world with Stanford university. So, um, yes. just making sure that that has been, you know, a priority of, you know, my life has allowed me to succeed and, and go to places I can never imagine. So shout out to you, of course, shout out to my moms, um, for helping me guide me and all that, but Yes. Flowers. I always give flowers to my guests, no matter who they are. <laughs> no matter who they are. All right. Well, let's get into the interview. I guess we kind of got into that with those with those questions. Um, but let's, let's, let's start with your your first year of coaching and, and what that experience was like for you. Because I, I want to know. I didn't even know that you, you coached at East, home of the yeah, Blades. Well, you know what's funny, you know, it actually started before that, but I give East all the credit of where it really started. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I started coaching at what you know, uh, Rosedale Middle School. Okay. Um, where I really started coaching some six and seven graders over there. I did that for two years as well, too. Uh, and, you know, I started with East, and that was with uh, Coach Milt Henderson, which you all know. A lot of you guys probably know his son, J.R. Henderson, who is a star at UCLA and won a national championship at UCLA and went on to become a really good professional player. So, but he gave me my first real, I say, coaching job uh, was at East High School. And that was, like I said, it was 1994. 94. And did you know in 94 that that coaching could be a potential career for you or did you have other plans? Um, I really wanted to. Um, my, my other plans was to try to go back and start playing again in the CBA and try to get overseas. I really wanted to go overseas. But the agent I had at the time kept telling me that I was close to getting a call up to the NBA. Uh, I think, you know, at that time, I know they were looking at me interested we never got the chance to talk a lot about it but the bulls at the time and the clippers at the time were the teams that were really interested in me and uh it was one of those things where it's a really tough 
forward to, to Brack, especially coming out at the time when we were Division Two, And so, but I really wanted to get overseas, but I kept going back to the CBA, which is equivalent to the G League. Right. Um, you haven't have any, any any regrets like for not trying to pursue that that professional career more? At times, you know, I, I think I kind of cut my career a little bit short. You know, but you know, it happens. You know, the ball has to eventually stop bouncing. But I do that I want to continue to still just play. I, I'm still really competitive. Still playing. Still playing to this day. <laughs> so Still, still think I got a shot at making it to the league. So, he still does, limping and all. Um, but, as much uh, as I try to tell this man he to sit down, he cannot put down a basketball like he goes out and plays. Every single week, I don't know him to miss more than a week of basketball. So this man is is always out there, always. Well, it's truly my, my outlet. And it's truly my relaxation where I relax. I can think uh, because it's been around me for so long that's just been my way of being able to uh, get away uh, and it, it got me to where I am today it got yeah. me, it's actually saved my life so without it I wouldn't probably wouldn't be here to be able to speak on this podcast yeah I mean I mean tell everybody about uh, my dad it comes from from very humble beginnings um you know grew up in, in Birmingham Alabama and speak a little bit about about your childhood and how you really got to, to Bakersfield because from Birmingham to Bakersfield that's a <laughs> a big yeah. leap <laughs> yeah, big leap. grew up in, in in Birmingham Alabama like you said uh, raised uh by a great great aunt uh, I mean I love her dearly uh my mom was around She's, she's here in my life now, uh, but I was raised by my great, great aunt uh, from birth. Legally, is she illegally, she's legally adopted me. So that's how I changed my last name where it was to call. So after her last name. So uh, I met my dad when I was 18, and when I was raised in Birmingham, Alabama, in the uh, a lot of people probably don't think this, but we have a lot of projects in Birmingham, Alabama. And so raised in the projects there in Birmingham, Alabama, went to one of the well-known high schools and played for a legendary coach named William Cap Brown. So played for him and then from there. Um, I had a lot of division one schools coming out of high school, but did not have the grades. Something I totally regret. That's one of the things I really regret not really buckling down in the classroom. Um, but I did take the long route around, went to community college for two years. Out here in California, I went to Greeley College. And back then it was called Kings River, but it's now changed it back to Reedley, not the city of Reedley. So I went to Reedley College for two years. Hall of Famer there too. Oh, my bad. I did mention, I mean, I went to that Hall of Fame, that Hall of Fame experience. So my bad, I, I forgot to put that in the bio. He is a Hall of Famer there. Hall of Famer. Yes. So uh, did that for two years. And I went to a school in Louisiana called Northwestern State for a year. Um, and that school had some uh, NCAA violation problems at the time when I was there. So um, they weren't looking to go to the tournament. They couldn't go. So I ended up leaving. And that's when I came to Cal State Bakersfield. And uh, been out here ever since. And like I said, did a little bit of pro stuff at the time. But that's how I ended my journey here. Then came back afterwards. And that's when, you know, everything else happened from there. Everything boom. Everything but I think, boom. I think that's beautiful, man, because I feel like the, the lessons that you learn as a kid, as a young man growing up has allowed us to be successful. As you said that, you know, you wish you had the grades. So you, you taught us, you know, school needs to be, you know, at a, a top priority for you, for us. Um, to be successful because of the route that you knew how to take was a bit tougher, you know, and, you know, you wanted us to be able to get to the, you know, the most successful route. And so here we are now. So I think it's beautiful. I mean, as a, as a parent, I hope that I can be able to teach my children based upon, you know, the things that I learned in life to be able to have them have a successful career. Um, but shoot, I mean, even throughout, you know, the, the long route that you did take, here you are today, 
a Bakersfield legend, region, Reedley legend. Everybody knows this man. They call him Lefty because nice. he's got the left hand going and, and none of his only children lefty. have a, the left weird. hand. Yes. Yeah, only Lefty in the family. All my yeah. kids are all right-handed. So this, I thought one of them would be Lefty, but it turned out none of them. Yeah, but yes. All righty. Didn't get the left hand, but we got the vision from you. So <laughs> all of us uh, have a, a terrible right eye and uh, we both wear glasses. And I think that's why everyone said, you look just like your daddy because we both got the glasses. We got the gaps. Uh, we both got rid of them though. So <laughs> and if, if everybody knows what a, a young Dewana looks like, you remember the gap. The iconic gap. I think she had it at the draft. She had the, the gap at the draft, and um, yes, just like did. just like my father, her gap is no longer there. Uh, I have a mini gap now because I didn't wear my retainer. But shout out to you for the vision, the gap, and the b-ball skills. There you go. <laughs> we'll take it. All right. Next question: What attracted you to coaching um, on the women's side? So you coached on the the men's side for you know a while when you were at you know, Cal State Baker. So, so what attracted you to go to the women's side when you started coaching at Taft? Well, um, I think, you know, it was definitely in God's plan that mm -hmm. happened. Right. Uh, really and true because I really wanted to stay on the men's side. And uh, at the time, the, the, the coach that I was, I played for and coached with underneath, uh, Pat Douglas had just gotten a job at UC Irvine. And so he left after we won the national championship in 97. He took the job at UC Irvine. The assistant coach moved up. And I really wanted to coach on him. I thought he was going to hire me. Um, I thought it was just kind of like automatically just one. I did a couple of recruiting there and I wanted to just stay in the family. He told me that he wasn't going to hire me. And he did tell me about there was a job opening at Taft College. He said, it's women's stuff. And I was like, I don't want to coach women. Mm -hmm. I want to stay where I am. And I don't know a lot about that. Now, I did coach uh, when I was at Northwestern State. I coached the intramural women's team. Okay. And we did win the championship, the <laughs> women's championship. We actually beat the women's basketball team. Really? The girls team, yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I did that in college for men, you know, coached those girls. Mm -hmm. that was on the intramurals team but I really didn't have any desire about coaching women but I think it was God's plan because of first off Dewana started it and then mm -hmm. she started playing I was at Taft at the time and, and it was like okay this is probably why then here come you yeah and now you know I've been in it for a long time since 1997 is when I started really coaching women's basketball so it was, I think it was just God's plan wasn't definitely wasn't in my nowhere in my book for me to coach women's basketball yeah but I mean thank God you did because for me growing up like literally I was born in 95 so you know two years like I've been seeing you coach my entire life and I would go to those practices five six years old like I would love driving up to Taft which is like 45 eh, not even that long like 30 25 minutes. 35 yeah 30 minutes to Taff and I would go just go to my dad's practice and just be chilling with him, going with him. We'd get McDonald's on the way back. Um, then when I got older, I was a water girl for his team. So I was at every single home game committed. Um, if we had some away games I could go to, I was there. Um, so that was like a huge part of my childhood growing up. Then when I got older, I was like 10 years old. My dad was making me practice with this, <laughs> with this college team. Like I was like shaking in my shoes and he was having me go against these grown women compared to me. You know, I was like 10, 10, 11 years old and he was having me compete against these college players. But that has been like, really like, I think the reason I kind of fell in love with basketball was because being around your team and me just, just being so immersed in that culture. I was like, man, this is so dope. Like from being the water girl to being in the practices, to being a fan, going to shoot at halftime. Like I absolutely love the experience. And I think that's one of the reasons why. I fell in love with basketball. Cool. That's good info right there. <laughs> Juana actually started it too because she used to come in the summers and when I yep. put on my camps up in Taft, she was in all the camps. She knew all the players. And so just like you did. So I just kept putting her in stuff and she was playing against them as well too. So um, it, was, it was just one of those things where, again, it was just God's way of saying, no, this is what you're going to do. 
Yeah. yeah. This is how you're going to do it. So it all worked out. Absolutely. What's what's the biggest um, difference between coaching men and women? Um, the below the rim, of course. Mm-hmm. One big one. Yep. Um, the women are really more fundamentally sound than men because uh, men still have their own flair they can jump you know, jump higher of course uh, they still kind of have their own flair to it and but the women are really more fundamentally sound than the men are that's been the one positive yeah you know, one thing that i did learn is you guys want to be coached just as hard Yes. If anyone else, you don't want to be you know, not pushed. So that's one of the things I had to learn as I was going through this because it was a learning process for me as well, too, to learn how to coach women because mm-hmm. it was new. Everything was brand new. You know, me starting off at the college was brand new. Coaching, being a head coach at the college level was brand new. And now coaching women was definitely something that was brand new so i had to really learn on the fly how to be able to do this stuff and so as i got to know more and more and more of the code one of the things that i had to be able to learn is that they want to be coached they want to be coached all yeah i mean i think i've experienced that being coached underneath you like i guess we can go to that right now i mean everybody asks what is it like having a dad <laughs> a dad as a coach you know, uh, as a basketball player. And I was like, I loved it. I think me and all my siblings can say that I absolutely loved having my dad as a coach and he coached me hard. Like, but it wasn't to the point, like, and you have a lot of coaches and, and fathers out there and parents out there that, that that scream and yell at your child. My dad had found a perfect a perfect balance between coaching us, pushing us, but it's, it's never too much. And, he, and he's done that on and off the court. Um, and that's why I loved having my dad at all my games, all my, my dad came to every single practice in high school, junior high and <laughs> in junior high, he helped with really ever since elementary school, really, I would say he's been to like every single practice, even despite himself having practice with his own team. He was there at like literally all my practices. That's why I consider like my dad, like my coach, although he couldn't coach me in the games, he was there at, you know, all the fundamentally sound practices. And I was always looking to him in the stands, you know, like what's best for me and encouraging me. And a lot of people don't know this. I don't even know if this is how it was for D. I've never asked this question, but for me growing up, I, I was like not fundamentally sound. <laughs> I was not that good playing ball. Um, but my dad literally just said, he's like, I remember he's like, just listen to me and just get rebounds and just run the floor <laughs> and I'll teach you the rest. Um, and I guess that's an advantage that a lot of kids don't have growing up. Like we had a dad that knew the fundamentals of the game, that knew how to teach the game. And that's allowed, I think that's what's allowed me and my siblings to be so successful. He's cheesing right now. He's just so, just so full of pride right now. <laughs> um, say some things. Can't nobody can't tell me, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. He said, can't nobody tell me, ish, I, I would cuss, but... <laughs> You got three kids, <laughs> bro. <laughs> One state champ. Um, so no, it's, it's it's really amazing. But I mean, a lot of people ask, like, what? Do, a lot of people ask me what it's like having a father as a coach. What was it like for you being a coach and having children playing basketball? What was that experience for you? Yeah, um, of course, extremely exciting because you guys chose a sport that I absolutely love. I mean, it's it love that I'm addicted to. Yes. So it's, it's, and you guys did that and you didn't have to. And I never did force it on you. And so that was the great thing about it. I never had to force it on you guys. And so um, it's it's really, really when you guys took to it, I had to really make sure, and don't know why I did it this way, but I just made sure that I tried to find that balance when I coached you guys. After practice after games you know i we talk a little bit of basketball we get in that car we might talk a little bit more but the one thing you guys didn't know i would shed it off and we talk about something totally different and you know we i want to be dad again but if you guys wanted to keep talking about it i would but if you didn't my goal was to just be dad again not to be a basketball coach because i never wanted you guys to 
feel like, okay, every time my dad comes around me, he's going to talk basketball. Every time he comes around, it's going to be basketball, something dealing with basketball. Or I'm in trouble because I didn't do this with basketball. He's going to be mad at me because I didn't do this in basketball. That's not what I wanted to do, and I didn't. So I share that with a lot of parents as well, too, to this yeah. day. They, I used to get that question a lot. Well, how did you coach your kids? And I just gave them that recipe that I still had to be dad. And I didn't want to be that because I've seen a lot of dads, a lot. lots of dads, lots of moms just drive their kids, drive their kids, and now they just don't love anymore. They don't play anymore. And I, I, I literally saw one dad do that. He would punish his son by making him go outside and just dribble the basketball for like a couple hours. And it had nothing to do with basketball sometimes. It might be school related, something else that he did wrong at home. And he would punish him by making him shoot layups or go outside and do it. And his son just quit as soon as he had the opportunity to do it. So I've seen that like over and over. Now, I've seen it myself, you know, me being yeah. friends with people, you yes. know, their parents and they just allow that, you know, that that coaching to bleed into the family life. And it just it it, it makes it rough on them enjoying the sport and it makes it rough on them, you know, in, in their relationship as, a, you know, as a parent and child. And so that's why I really appreciate it about, you know, my father. And, you know, we just never made like basketball, like the number one priority of like every single, like every single day, you know, we're going to talk about ball, 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 like, no, like we have, you know, relationship outside of that. And of course, basketball is a big part of our relationship, but it's not the only thing. And so that's what I I really enjoyed about. It. And I think that's why we've had such a successful relationship and bond as, as father and daughter on and off the court, because you found that, that beautiful balance that is so delicate and that once you find it, man, it's, it's, it's really amazing to have. Still to this day, yeah. Shoot out a text. What's up? And we might not even talk basketball. It might be yep. something totally, totally different yep. on that on that topic. And so that's just how it's always been. I, I wanted to keep it that way because I I never want my kids to not want me to be at their games or not be able to appreciate the fact that I'm not you know just always want to talk basketball. So let me get on their nerves about some other stuff. Like yeah. Besides basketball, that's easy for me to be able to do that. So I, I just appreciate the fact that it can be a full arena and they know I'm coming to that game. They're going to look around until they find me. I remember one of the first, the first, maybe it was the second. What was the, no, it, was, it had to be the first or the second championship in Phoenix. That arena was full. Boom, and I remember that one. Yeah, and I think we were sitting yeah. up in corner i believe yeah he was at the top yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And she looked around it was absolutely packed there, sold out and she pinpointed me and it's, it's not going to happen if you know they're going to find me somewhere it's like yep. during Waldo. so it was it was packed so i, I that's the, the, the part that i absolutely love that they want me at the games and we're talking about it right now um like the chicago coming up we coming out. We coming out, y'all. We coming yeah. out to Chicago. Uh, yeah, you know, hopefully they get like, they get yeah, to that. Uh, already told me she's coming. Y'all, let me know. I'll be <laughs> yes. She had wanted me to come. She thought they were going to be playing somebody else at first. Mm -hmm. First round, she was already like, "No, you need to come to my game. Come to my first round games. Got to be there." So it's. I, I mean, I love it. Absolutely love it. And you'll see us be acting a fool, man. If you guys remember uh, last season, I was tweeting my way through, especially it was the same semifinals too, um, which was Chicago and uh, Connecticut. And I was tweeting my way through. I was I was not a, a WNBA player. I was the Wanda Bonner sister. And so that's what I was tweeting like. We're going to be going crazy on the sideline. It's, it's, it's no uh, no mutual nothing. It's Connecticut's son, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that is saying. Well, you y'all see us on the sidelines. We're about to be going crazy, but um, just going along with you know having a good relationship. I think that also um, coincides with with your coaching career too, because you have really good relationships with your players. Yes, from I years do. back, really well, good relationship. One tell, the one thing I tell my players is, and they understand. I, I, I talk about it so much. I probably wear them out with this part. I'm not Go going to say. Not going to teach you or tell you anything that I haven't taught my own kids. I'm not going to teach you or tell you anything that I haven't taught my own kids. And they, they know that. And so they, they see it. And my kids, they know my players. My players know my kids. It's, it's uh, every year 
it's a, a relationship that, you know, even if there's a new player coming in, they're going to get to know them. The players are going to get to know my kids. And so at some point in time, they'll get an opportunity to know them either by seeing them. Erica comes in, she practices with them, she watches them practice the same way like she did when she was at TAP. So it's just like, it's like when she was younger, nothing's changed. So. Yeah, it was it was really cool because um, when I was younger, like as, as him as an assistant coach at CSUB, um, I was like practicing with the team. I was like the young one. And then as I, I got older and older, older, then I was playing with him. Uh, I was the same age as him. Then we was playing against y'all in college. And then, you know, now I'm like kind of like that, that older person they go to for it. I guess kind of some wisdom now I'm, I'm an old lady now and they go into me <laughs> and I still like to practice with them so it's been really cool to be able to experience that but also going off of um your relationship with your players like it, it was really cool to experience because it was something that I didn't have with Tara really until like my senior year where I had like probably the best relationship with Tara and to kind of be envious of the relationship with your players that you have with them I was like dang I wish I had a player you know to be able to joke around with me ask me about my you know they know about my family they know about my dogs they know about you know everything um and I thought that was really cool and that's one of the reasons why that it also attracted me a lot of people don't know that my dad recruited me <laughs> to play at Cal State Bakersfield when I was in high school a lot of people don't know that <laughs> you gotta tell them about that he did recruit me you know and the reason why I actually you know considered it you know seriously is because my I knew my dad knew my game the best um no other coach in America not even Tara Vanderveer um could coach me like my dad could coach me and I know that he's gotten me to the place that I've gotten to so that's why I really considered it um to, to play for CSUB I remember we talked about it in the car I think we was at in a drive through in McDonald's and you talked you brought it up you're like hey man you know the offer's there <laughs> so I got offered by my dad in the car at McDonald's. <laughs> try to give my favorite food. <laughs> <laughs> try to try to give me. He he know I love some food, so he try to he try to he try to give me with the food. <laughs> but, but yeah, the one, the one thing ahead. I did tell her though is because I had gotten a job so late, and she had already been highly recruited. And the one thing I did tell her like, look, even though yet the offer is there, this is your passion, you know. You've already started this process. Go ahead and live the dream that you thought that you were going to live. Don't live it because of me. My, my dream was to become a head coach at, at the college level, Division One level. I'm going to live my dream, live your dream. And so I can see the, like, relief of, like, okay, I got that off my back. I, I can do it if I want to, and I cannot do it if I want to. It's going to be okay. And so I can see that part, just the relief of your off your face off of that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a great memory too. So <laughs> like I said, so many of them. Yeah, man, so many. And I remember that. I remember that conversation. I was like, everyone's like, is your dad recruiting? I'm like, yeah, he is actually. Um, so people were always like kind of thrown off like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't I play for my dad? He knows my game the best. I'm, yeah. his, I'm his daughter. He knows me the best. So it would have been, I think we would have been successful together. Honestly, we would have been, woof. Yeah, we already we already bigger so legends now, but man, they would have they had made a, a, some statues of us. I would think we should be. We, we would have father daughter statues. That would have been big time. Oh another man, it would have been big. It would have been. Well, well, you know, you still got memory. Chloe. Yeah. Well, another great memory was me playing you at Stanford. Yeah, great memory. More great memory. Not not the one up there. It was yeah. good, but the yeah. one in Bakersfield was the best. Yeah, I had an opportunity to, to to play against my dad twice. We did one. It was at Stanford. Tara likes to have the opportunity for you guys to be able to play. Well, you guys, um, <laughs> the players be able to play at their hometown at least one time. Um, so my dad kind of set it up. They did a, a three year deal. Um, so my junior year, we played at Stanford. Or we played at Stanford against them. That was really cool because I knew the girls were like my like my second family, like my second team. So that was really cool being able to play against them. Um, and then my senior year, we got to go back uh, to Bakersfield, and I played in front of all my friends and family. My dad was hyped. Um, it was a it was a it was such a fun experience man I've never been my coaches were really worried about me they were like oh we don't know Bird's gonna be really nervous for this game we know we need her to play well um I was already playing well in that preseason and then I remember um just stepping on the court and I've just never felt so relaxed even to this day I've never felt so so at home like that's what I felt like on that court like and I have it's a it's a really an undescribable feeling like a feeling of peace that I felt when I stepped on the court, I was like, woof, let's ball. 
Yeah, oh, we, it was, we it was dope. figured out. I did. I had everything planned. We did a good job. Every time you tried to face up, we jammed her. She tried to do the front pivot. We, we just jammed her. We jammed her every single time. So finally, she figured out what we were doing. That's that smart Stanford crap. So, I remember, I remember that game. Like I was doing some non Eric McCall things. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't thinking, know that she had all this in her bag. So I was like, where did that I come was from? deep in the arsenal. I don't know what had possessed me to do the things I did. Like I remember how I came down and transition. I, I did like a, like a, a guard bounce pass to my, to my, my other post player. It was like a two on two, a two on one. And I like passed it to my, my other post player, Nadia. And I was like, I was just like on another level. Granted, I did airball some threes. The three-point shot was not there for that game, but <laughs> I was hyped. Dewana came out into that game. She wore a Stanford beanie. Oh my and, gosh. That and was a, and, and a CSUB, CSUB shirt. You should be sharing the Stanford hoodie. Yeah. That yep. was one of the man, that was great. She surprised me. Oh, I was like, ah, this is a big one. Yeah, she had never, I never seen that was the first the game other she other. had came to. Yeah, she surprised everybody. And man, I was. That game right there, I did get emotional. Yeah. I had I had to, so. Yeah. <clears throat> I got a little emotional, a little choked up, so. If you are wondering, yes, we did win both games. Um, But. <laughs> first battles. half, we were doing well. <laughs> you guys did it well. You guys did it well in the first half. Um, But it was a great battle. And just for me to be able to compete against my dad, man, like a dream come true, really, like, to be able to do that. It's highly recommended if there's any father-daughter experiences out there. It's a lot of fun, and um, so shout out to y'all, man. One of the, probably one of the, my favorite games of like of my career all time was that game. Yeah, that one. Oh. And then the only other one that was, of course, with you when I came to Hungary and watched. Yeah, and then uh, I would mean play. Yeah, me and same D. team for the first time. Oh, yes. that was. <laughs> yeah, me and D play on the same team in Hungary. She came to my team. I would say that was my team because I played on the team for, for four years. She came out and helped us um, get to the Euro Cup Final Four. And that was like an absolute dream come true, you know, to be able to play with my sister. We had never even played against each other. Um, and then that was our first opportunity for us to be able to play with each other on the same team. I, we had to fly dad out for that one. We had to fly him out to Hungary, all yeah. the way out to Hungary, just to see that. Really fun. That was so fun. Yeah. I to get that. That was a great experience for me to watch them play on the same team. I've watched them battle against each other in the WBA. Of course, that's always fun. But seeing them play on the same team, I thought it was going to happen again this year in the W. You never know. We still got time. It's going to get there. <laughs> Don't retire yet, D. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we still got time. We still got time. Okay, uh, a few more questions. Um, I want to, uh, this, this question is for parents who are listening in and who have children that are playing basketball. They want their child to get to the next level. How much time did we put in as kids and did you put in as, as a coach slash parent to get us to the next level? Because I think when I'm listening to kids and we have a different experience, I have a dad who, who knows the game at a different level. There's a lot of parents out there who don't know about basketball, so they send their you know, child to trainers. But I've seen these kids being absolutely overworked <laughs> and they're like working out three hours every single day to try to get their child to the next game. Um, and I just want people to hear your response because everybody, I mean, everybody is different. Some, some people may need that experience, but for us, I know it's different. I just want people to be able to, to hear that. Yeah, I, uh, it's definitely, I see it too. A lot of parents are just working, 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 working their kids. I get them up in the morning, go to work, work out. At school, they're going to work out. They might have practice, they're working out. And, oh, well, that's fine if that's what, you need to do. For me, I didn't, you know, I would take my kids out and we work out, you know, I'd try to get a short workout in 45 minutes. Now that 45 minutes, a lot of times lasted an hour. Sometimes it went to an hour and a half. Yeah. But I started off wanting to give them short workouts because I got more out of them with the shorter workouts than I did these long drug out workouts. Um, there were times when I would tell them, we're we going to work out at this time. And there was times where Erica might be in the room sleep. I was fake sleeping sometimes, y'all. I was just telling my friend that I'd be fake sleeping. He'd be knocking on my, Erica, it's time to go work out. <laughs> what I would do, I would simply close the door back and go back and do what I needed to do because it was not my time to really try to get, I didn't need to work out. She needed to work out. So I didn't force it again. It's one of the things I did not do. I would call their name. 
Or if I saw that she was asleep, I would, her back was turned and she was asleep, I would maybe whisper. And then I would just close the door back. And I would go back to being able to do what I need to do. If it was me going to play, it was me going to play. Or if it was me doing something, just chilling around the house, that's what I did. So I didn't do anything else besides, you know, I didn't force that on them. I didn't force any workouts. They were asleep, they were asleep. So they had something else they said they needed to do at that, that time. Hey, go ahead. I never did force it, but I know once I did get the opportunity to work them out, I, I would have their full attention. And I did all the time. So yeah, it, that's what and we had me. like, especially at a young age, I think the younger parents are wondering like, cause at like sixth grade, what I was like 10 or something. Yeah. Like I would have my practice two times a week for the elementary. Um, I'm not for sure if I was playing club ball then. I think I was, maybe I had those two practices for club ball. And then I would do like a workout like once a week with my dad like one time and that was it <laughs> and that was like really it um and we were like what that's it and you know I think that we were absolutely privileged I can't like I can't deny that fact that we are privileged to have a dad that knows the game that knows how to teach us as you know compared to you know parents that, that know nothing about it so they have to send their child you know to go to learn basketball but for us it was like we didn't need to be in the gym like you know all day and to it, basketball 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 like we also had lives like outside of basketball and you know through time and, and like commitment of course that came but it wasn't like never a drawn out long process you know to be able to to get the work in you know I think that efficiency is absolutely a beautiful thing that needs to be embraced more in basketball um, I think I've, I've learned that more even as I gotten older because <laughs> the long the long uh the long practice is the reason I kind of got some injuries <laughs> <laughs> That's probably how I should have practiced you longer. You would be getting all these injuries. <laughs> I'm saying. It all I'm saying. Out. Yeah, it did. The same thing. I would give the one a short workouts. We go work out, give her things to do. And even I give her things to, to take back to Alabama with her. Yep. She would tell me she got it. And then um, I would add more to that as she went on. So, yeah, it's just, and it's, that's the way I did it. So I yep. it might not work for you, but yep. this is what worked for me. So is that the key? Is that the key to getting to getting three kids in professional basketball? What's what's the absolute key for you? Or I, I guess you you've listed so many throughout the podcast, but what's what's the absolute key for you to getting your kid to play professional basketball, even college basketball? Four A, listen to me. <laughs> Get your cow, um, get your child at Cal State Bakersfield and, and shoot. And you, there we go. I'm plugging, I'm plugging them in, y'all. I'm plugging them in. Get your child at Cal uh, State Bakersfield. We're going to have three go pro this year. We already have two that's gone. That's right. We have a third one about to get ready to go. Yep. Shout out um, Vanessa. She's probably listening in. I know she's going to listen to this one. <laughs> yeah. So I'm waiting on Vanessa right now. She's the yeah. last to who rocks, uh, but she'll get her opportunity to go pro. So I do train them. Um, I do, again, I'm not going to teach players anything I haven't talked about on kids. We've got a lot of success there um, at Bakersfield. We've, we've done some really, really good things with basketball there, uh, especially for us being a low mid major team. We've done a lot of great things as well as our, our team only being, I guess you could say 22 years old. Yeah. We've only been around since 2000. We've only been division one since 2011. So, so yeah. Yeah, 2011 and then. 2007, we, we turned division one. And then you guys journeyed because you were independent for a while. Yeah, we were independent. Yep. Yep. So we've done a lot of great things. So it's been fun. There you have it. Listen to Greg McCall. That's it. That's and that's the key, y'all. And that's the key. <laughs> well, thanks, Pops, for being on the show. Um, this is really cool. I I I I was looking forward to this and it was it was oh, a man. really fun conversation. This is fun. I mean, I thank you, Bird. I mean welcome, welcome to Bird's Eye View. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bird. I mean. I really want to call you something else, but thank you, Bird. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't 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 reveal the I'm nickname, gonna, man. Don't, don't reveal the nickname to the people, man. Just that's that's confidential. Now that's now he got my baby sister calling. He's just just making fun of me. <laughs> I can't help it. It just comes out naturally. It's my baby scary. sister be calling me his nickname that he got me, and she, it's just hilarious because she be making fun of me. So I'd be trying to make fun of her, find her nickname. But of course, before we end the show. I'd like to ask all my guests, what's their favorite overseas basketball story? I know you've been overseas a couple of times with your own team. And of course, watching me play, you probably go out and see Justin play in Poland. But but what's been your craziest overseas experience? Oh, wow. 
just getting the opportunity to watch you guys play. I'm Man, that say. ain't crazy. I need something wild. You know what I got? I got one. Well, you want me to remind, remind you of it? Yes, remind me. Man, they had you drinking all that polinka out there in Hungary. This man was Oh my drunk. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. That was crazy. That was, that is a drinking country. They drink. <laughs> and I've never, oh my gosh, that, whatever that stuff, polit. Palinka. So Palinka is essentially equivalent to like a Russian vodka. It's, it's Hungarian vodka. It's, it's Hungarian made. It's homemade. It's strong. So we don't know how much percentage of alcohol is in it. It's freaking strong. Yes. And, and wine. And they love wine. Of, they drink lots of wine. They drink lots of shots of that. And the one thing I did learn um, is to drink a lot of water. <laughs> and they drink a lot of water with this. So I learned to drink a lot of water. And it actually helps a lot. So I drink more than enough water now. So water is like one of my favorites now, all of a sudden. So yeah, water, water, this, water, water, water. They had this man a little tipsy out there in hunger. I was like, what did they do to my dad? Because me and D had, we had when we was, we was chilling. He was like, yeah, man, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, hang out with the, with the, with the club and the president and all that stuff and the coaches. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. I got to hang out with all of them. They love me. I love them. Um, I'm pretty sure I... I'd probably be more than welcome to come back. I, I keep oh, in contact with one of the sports writers over there every from time. Oh, that's time. right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I absolutely love the coach. Uh, I love your coach. Yeah, shout out to Jacob. Yeah, I, I really love him. And uh, but it was so fun to, to to hang out with all the owners and the presidents and vice presidents and drink with them and eat with them. The food is delicious. Love me Drinking. Too. I can stop after a certain time, but they don't stop. They don't stop in Hungary. Palinka, Palinka. My first day in Hungary, they offered I, I, my roommate, um, not roommate, but my apartment mate, Monty. I'm going to call what I lived in an apartment. I called a, a dang dorm room. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what I lived in. Um, she came knocking on my door. She's like, hey, do you want some, a welcome Palinka shot? I'm like, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like thinking it's just going to be something cool. And um, man, when I tell you that my throat was burning for five minutes, I had to act cool. I was like, Hey, salute! Yes, yes. and the, then uh, went back into my car. I was like, <laughs> "How long you been gone from Hungary now? This is year number what from there?" Uh, I'm entering my second year outside of Hungary. Second year, I have some still in my cabinet. So you got some poly, and you can let it sit. You can let it sit some poly in there, and, and the longer I, it sits, the stronger it gets. I pull it out every once in a while and take a capful. <laughs> yeah, they say they say palinka is like if if you're sick, taste a palinka. You're hungry, pal palinka. Want to feel good? Palinka. Sad? Palinka. It's just it's just the cure for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to hungry, shout out to palinka. That That's why I couldn't remember the crazy story because <laughs> I couldn't remember the crazy story. So because I was too drunk to remember the crazy story. So yes, they. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One of the ladies that was part of the owner or something like that. Yeah, know I mean. She, oh, she, she was the drinking. one that was drinking the most. Yeah, she's a drinker. She kept trying to force me to, and I was like, she was a little short lady. I'm like, how is she drinking? I'm not tired of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> they'll keep you going. They'll drink, they'll drink all night. But all shout out to Hungry. Shout out oh, to Hungry. Shout out to Palinka. Um, shout out to my pops, Greg McCall. Thank you for being on the show once again. Yes, sir. Dad, if you want to plug yourself on Instagram, Twitter, you got you to build the social media presence up. You guys go follow my dad. He he be on there, but he don't really be. Yeah, I don't be on there. But... Or be on Instagram. But if you, if you guys want to follow him or follow his team next season, um, once again, he's the women's basketball coach of Cal State Bakersfield. I think you can follow them at CSUB. Uh, underscore, WB. underscore yeah wbb um you can keep track of of all his success of what he's got going on next season super excited for him you can oh, follow man. him it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a what's, fun your, what's your name on instagram g mccall coach g uh, mccall i think it's, you don't know i don't know i think it's Greg. we'll put it we'll put it on we'll put it on if you guys want to keep following keep track yeah, of my dad you'll figure it out y'all figure it out <laughs> but so. if you want to follow me um you can follow me at birds of war underscore 24 on instagram and twitter you can follow our twitter page at the number one birds eye view and you can follow us on instagram at birds eye view dot podcast thank you guys for listening dad you want to say something else okay oh uh, man thank you so much for having me bird i mean i, I love to come back again 
course, you know, at some other time. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll do a show with me, you, and D one day. D's so busy, yeah. though. And, and we got to put Justin on there, too. And Justin, correct. Yes, we got to put Justin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. A little bit of bubble. Clay can talk about the state champ. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do one big family podcast for y'all. So, so stay tuned for that one next season. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> that'll be fun. All yeah. right, y'all. Thank you. You guys have an amazing week. Be blessed. Deuces.